Hello everyone, I'm the NEFC and this is Blue Lines TV and welcome to another Transfer Daily video and in today's video I'm going to be talking about Ruben loftus cleek I'm going to be talking about Rugani links and I'm going to be talking about Eden Hazard and Real Madrid but you guys, before I get straight into the video you know what's about to come? I'm sure you can recite it for yourselves already remember you guys, smash that like button help me get more than 500 likes for today's video and press the bell notification button as well to stay tuned to all things Blue Lines TV. You guys, if you're not aware, I just released a top 10 facts on Sire right now. So after this video, give that video a watch to get some unique facts about Maurizio Sarri. Starting with the first story though, and I have to talk about Rugani of Juventus. Before I say anything to you, it might not mean anything to you, but I can actually confirm that these talks are very real. Chelsea are trying to sign Rugani. Now reports coming out from the press are stating that Chelsea's third bid of £35 million, which is about €40 million, Euros, should be enough to sign him. Originally, Juventus wanted €40 million. Euros. Chelsea started with a £27.3 million bid and a £30.1 million bid as well, but they eventually paid a €35 million. Reports also state that Chelsea have offered Rugani a five-year contract worth £60,000 per week, which is about £3.5 million a year. And the reports also state that Rugani would be very satisfied with this offer because it is effectively doubling the wages he's on currently. Now, I can clarify a few more things. As I said, it might not mean anything to you because this has been in the press as well. But yes, Manolas is the second target in case anything does happen with Rugani. But I can tell you that Chelsea are a bit put off by Manolas' personality and off-field antics. He does have a 35 million euro transfer clause in his contracts and he might immediately be thinking, well why are Chelsea even targeting Rugani in the first place? Why not target Manolas if he's cheaper? Why do we even need another defender? You guys, all very good questions. I'm in the same boat. I really don't understand why we need to do this. But I have been told this is how the general things seem to go at Chelsea. The club has their own targets that they look to sign. The manager has his own personal targets that he'd hope the club would sign as well. And most times, they aren't the same. They don't really complement each other. Now, usually when the club are targeting a manager's option, they'll look to try and get a reduced fee for that player. Let's look at Lukaku, look at Alexandro, etc, etc. Now, when it comes to the club hoping to make a signing, they tend to go for more investment style players, with the most notable one being Ross Barkley. But when it comes to Rugani, this is literally a very rare case where both the manager and the club are very happy with the option. Now with Sari, and as I'm always stressing all the time, especially during live streams, he's not the type of manager that demands any type of player. He doesn't necessarily demand a specific type of player, but Sari will be like, well, I'd like a winger that can cut inside, I'd like a defender that's good on the ball and has pace, etc, etc. And then it's up to the director of football to then look for that type of player to bring. And this is another reason as to why Sari will complement things at Chelsea. As I said with Rugani, he is a club target. Chelsea have already looked into Rugani already, so he's in the scouting system already. Plus, Sari would be happy to work with Rugani again. And as the press are stating, it looks like Rugani could potentially be the first player that we do sign. Now, you might also be thinking, well, what does this mean for the other defenders at the club currently? You know, guys like Zuma, Luis, Kale, Aspi, Rudiger and Christensen. Now, with Rugani close to signing for Chelsea, I've been told there's a possibility that one to two defenders could be leaving. Now, you guys, I'll tell you this. Cast your minds back to Rudiger. How did we sign him? Well, if you remember Rudiger, you'll remember Nathan Aki. And looking at our current defenders, who could currently be sold to cover the fee for Rugani or cover close to it? And this is why I brought up Rudiger and Aki earlier. Of course, Aki was sold with a buyback clause. He was sold for £20 million. That money was reinvested back into the purchase for Rudiger. And it looks like Chelsea will be doing something very similar. And as I was saying, are you going to get that same type of money for Gary Cahill and David Luiz? Most likely not even if you sold both of these players. Now, who else could be sold with a buyback fee that could help cover some of the transfer for Rugani? It's unfortunate, but from what I'm hearing currently, because this shit changes all the time, you guys accept it, but currently it's looking like Kurt Zuma could be leaving Chelsea. There's a lot of clubs interested in France, especially with Paris Saint-Germain and Marseille 
I'm hearing. Plus, I think Sevilla as well are looking into the services. And to be honest, it's quite depressing to think about it. As I said, this is what I'm currently hearing right now. It was similar to Ruben Loftus' cheek, which I will be touching on later in this video, so stay tuned for that. But I'm hoping that Zuma will have the chance to at least show Sari what he can do during pre-season. Now, moving on to the next story, and is Ruben Loftus' cheek going to be leaving Chelsea next season on loan? Now, for this story, I can provide some further context into things, but just as a disclaimer, this isn't going to be current news. The reality is, when I do hear things, I'm not always inclined to put them straight in a video. Of course, I like to get further information. It has to be suitable for a video. Just me hearing one or two sentences isn't enough to make a video. You guys, you know I like to try and be a bit responsible with the news I do give you guys. I'm not just about putting any type of story in a video and getting money from it. Now, of course, a lot of you guys saw the reports from last night. I'm not going to be talking about them, but I will be referencing one or two points because, as I said, I do have further context into the situation. Now, you guys on the screen, you can probably see the text message that was sent to me on the 12th of June. And this came from one of the plugs that I know. And he's been telling me that he keeps hearing that Ruben could possibly be leaving on loan next season and nothing's guaranteed 100% right now. Now, let me paint the picture for you guys before everyone starts panicking and getting nervous. Now, during last week, when... Ruben was questioned about his future at Chelsea. He came out saying that he doesn't want to be on the bench for next season. He wants first team football. If he doesn't get that, he'll consider his options and consider leaving Chelsea. Now, a lot of you guys will know immediately, this is a massive pressure tactic from Ruben. And it's not the first time we've seen players at Chelsea do things similar. What we're seeing with Eden Hazard currently is another example. And another example was Andreas Christensen and his father, of course, when he was at Borussia watching Gladbach. His future wasn't certain, a lot of clubs are interested and the Christensen camp definitely used that to their advantage. They put pressure on the club saying that if you don't meet our demands, we're going to consider leaving and consider our options. And this is the reason you guys why it's not necessarily always good to report the first thing you hear on the day, on the hour, on the minute. Sometimes you do get a better picture if you wait a few days with the information that you do have. It also conflicted because for my other source, He's told me that Sari has massive plans for Ruben's development. He's spoken to the club about a multi-year development structure that he does have for Ruben Loftus cheek. And this is why I couldn't understand why he'd be leaving, but everything's made sense to me and I understand the full picture and the full context. Now, I brought up the Andreas Christensen situation because, and I keep saying this shit all the time, football clubs are like a business. Chelsea are gonna prepare for any worst case possibility. Now, I'm gonna reference what Matt Law said in his article yesterday, and he spoke about the fact that Chelsea are considering loaning Ruben because the reality is he isn't gonna have a very big preseason. He's gonna be rejoining the squad back in August. When he comes back in August, the season starts literally a week or two later. Now here is where you have to see it from Chelsea's perspective. Keep in mind everything else that I've been telling you guys. Now imagine this hypothetical. Imagine if Sari did have other plans or maybe he couldn't guarantee Ruben getting straight into the first team immediately because Ruben hasn't had a preseason with Sari. He doesn't understand the tactics or the system just yet. And let's imagine that Ruben is impatient and he can't accept that he wants to play straight away. And let's imagine because Ruben does want to play straight away, he's considering leaving because he doesn't trust the process at Chelsea, which he would be entitled to hypothetically. I'll tell you guys this quickly, Ruben is very highly rated at the club with a lot of people behind the scenes and he's rated very highly by Sari. Remember, the hypothetical I'm posting to you guys is the fact that whether Ruben can get game time straight away. And because everyone rates him highly and they don't want to lose him, this is where Chelsea could potentially let him leave on loan. And Matt Law does say this in his article where he does stress that Chelsea could be forced to send him out on loan, hypothetically, if it doesn't work in their current favour. So you guys, no one should be reacting negatively or panicking or thinking, oh, Chelsea, they're going to loan Ruben. What's happening? What's happening? As I keep saying, see things as if it's a business. See things on the business side of Chelsea. When you have that type of mentality, then you'll realise, of course, you need to forecast any type of possibilities. And I hope you guys that I wasn't too confused in explaining things. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. In the comment section, let me know if you understood what the hell I was talking about. And the final story I'm going to be talking about is Eden Hazard and those Real Madrid links. 
But this story literally never ends. Now, Marca are reporting that Lopetegui, the new Real Madrid manager, wants to reignite that focus back on Eden Hazard. Now, Marca are reporting that Eden Hazard's dad, Thierry Hazard, has actually had a meeting with Real Madrid before the Champions League final game against Liverpool. And Marca are also stating that Hazard could be a possibility because he would be a cheaper alternative to Neymar at around 120 million euros. Now you guys, here's why I give my thoughts and opinions on the story. Now we already know that Hazard has been flirting a bit with Real Madrid, but as the article states, this actually happened recently about a month ago. You guys, a lot of things changed and happened in football within a month. Now put your hypothetical hats on for a second. What if this was a pressure tactic from Hazard to put on the club? There's another hypothetical where this could just be an informal discussion with Real Madrid. And this is one thing that people need to understand. Informal discussions permeate all across football. It's natural that players will speak to a host of clubs regardless of whether they're interested in signing for them or not. The reason why it's not bad to try and consider your options is that when you know what your options are, you can then start to strategize and do what's best for you. You guys remember back to a month ago, we just won the FA Cup, Conte was still around, Hazard wasn't too sure about what was happening behind the scenes at all. In the context of the situation, it would make a lot of sense as to why Thierry Hazard would speak to Real Madrid. And cast your minds back to when Hazard came out stating that he wants to know that Chelsea are going to be signing good players and he wants to know what the future plans are going to be. Hazard came out stating this on the 15th of May. Real Madrid and Liverpool basically played 11 days afterwards. Now when Marcel stated that Thierry Hazard spoke to Real Madrid before the Champions League, they didn't state whether it was on the day. Now for me, if I was to take an educated guess, I'd say that discussions would have taken place within those 11 days. Does this mean that Hazard's gonna go? No, of course not you guys. Remember, before he decides anything, he's gonna have to speak to who the new manager's gonna be. I'm guessing he might have been informed on potential targets already. Literally, Hazard is in control of the situation because he knows that Chelsea can't afford to lose him. It would be a massive stain on Marina if Hazard did leave for Real Madrid. And because of that pressure to make sure you're keeping Hazard happy, expect a lot of positives to happen. Let's not forget too, there was an interview that Hazard had with SFR Sport of France. And in that interview, he was talking about his love for the club. He was talking about the fact that he hopes that fans don't want to see him leave. He was speaking about how his family are settled and how he loves the city as well. Now to summarize everything I've been saying, all I take from this personally is that Hazard wanted to explore his options. He wanted to see everything that was happening. He wanted to put pressure on the club as well to meet his demands. And I kind of think it's taking an old story and trying to obviously sell papers and sell clicks. I'm not saying they've made it up. No, of course not. But you guys have to realize that with information, you can twist things into your favor with how you want it to be. And of course, the favor for publications like that is the clicks the views and the money. But anyway, you guys, that's going to end today's video. Please like, comment and subscribe. Remember, I did release a top 10 facts on Sari. I think you guys might find it pretty entertaining, so definitely give that a view. In the comment section below, give me your thoughts and opinions on the stories I've covered today. I want to hear your thoughts about Ruben in particular. Expect more videos to be coming out tomorrow. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. Signing up.